Good morning. Well, I don't have a whole lot of show of things to show today. Other than I have been working on that uh, shawl. You know, three wood shawl. Um, I will be putting up the tutorial this week. I am working on it as we speak. Um, and that's about it. The only other thing is I have, we had the kiddos turn in a bunch more hats. And what I think is cute is on two of these hats, <coughs> the kids had specifically asked for rainbow pom-poms. If possible, is what the teacher wrote next to it or their secondary choice. So I am going, to, I have an idea for making a rainbow pom-pom. We'll see if it works. I don't know if it's going to work or not. So yeah, that's kind of it for today's podcast. Um, the only thing other than that is I do hope that everyone um, has taken a chance and looked, taken a chance taking the time to look at the videos that people have been putting up in support of Llama Mama Kayla and the Two Thumb Challenge, um, I learned quite a bit because um, I think Spring is the one that did the um, chaining where she put the crochet hook between her thighs and then used the two thumbs. I think it was Spring. It may, it may not be. But... Um, yeah, I have learned a lot in just watching those videos, you know, for some all kinds of tips and tricks and those kind of things. And yeah, it's rather amazing. I do know that um, at one point when I had had the um, herniated disc in my neck, um, I could not hold on to a crochet hook or a knitting needle because they would fall out of my hands because I thought I was grasping them but I couldn't feel them so um and I wonder if some of those tricks would have helped then when I was because I was continuing to try to do things you know constantly the, that kind of thing um with it so yeah that's been rather interesting um I hope also that you have been watching um K and K crochets um what are they calling it? Go over Red Rover Reverse. I think that's what they're calling it. Um, it's a nice little series. It's a lot of fun getting to find new channels as well as catch up with some old ones that uh, unfortunately YouTube has uh, deleted my subscriptions to. You know they do that all the time. That's rather annoying. So, yeah, that's um, been rather interesting to look at and to see those kind of things. Um, but, yeah, I have cats that are playing with food. They've pulled a piece of kernel out of their food and they're pucking it around like it's a hockey puck. And here they go for another one. And then they eat it eventually. I'm telling you, these cats, they crack me up. They certainly do. But yeah, um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. So this next week I'll be working on hats. Probably next couple of weeks um, because I have quite a stack of hats to do. So, um, And the way that I normally would do that is I will take a couple of the hats and pull the colors put them in a gallon Ziploc bag so and with a hat so that I know that those are the colors that needed to be done and then I have a um, bag where when I finish up with the colors anything else left I put back into this to a separate bag so that I can pull from it as I go but I try to match up colors and everything put them in a bag so I know that I have that ready to go to start working on the hats and we have we have a set pattern that we use it is a paid for pattern um, I didn't realize it was a paid for pattern but it was a paid for pattern um, it's one 
that the person who's running the prayer shawl ministry found and she likes it. So, um, you know, we're using that. And, uh, yeah, so it's been rather interesting. Uh, we, Like I said, we had one of the ladies in the group said, what are you going to do when the kids, their siblings want hats too? You know, because there's just a few of us here that can do this. So it's going to be rather interesting, you know, as we get to that point, um, what happens and where we go from there. So, yeah, yesterday it snowed, um, and then it didn't snow, and then it snowed again, and then it didn't snow, and uh, I had the windows open for the cats, and they were just fascinated by the snow. There's a little bit of leftover in the morning, just a you know, it almost looks like dew. Most of it melted away. So it's supposed to be warmer today. Thank goodness. Really glad about that. But uh, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, so let's get into what in tarnation. Okay. Kangaroo stampede interrupts golf games. Golfers at a course in Victoria, Australia, captured video when their games were interrupted by a stampede of kangaroos hopping through. Stephen Rocha posted a video to social media showing the fair Duncan stampede of kangaroos that appeared during his game of golf at the Heritage Golf and Country Club. We have kangaroos on our two courses at Heritage Golf and Country Club, but I've never seen this before, he wrote. He can be heard in the video asking the marsupials to not stand on my golf ball. Second golfer, Michael McCarthy, replied with his own video taken from another anger, angle. He said the parade of ruse felt like it went on forever, and it does. It's quite a show. Um, and there's video. There's a link. This next video is is heartwarming in many ways. Um, yeah. Dog who spent months with box stuck on his head gets a new home. A dog that spent months wandering loose with box stuck over his head is now free and has a new home, animal services officials said. The cane corso, named Bear, was spotted wandering the Gulf Coast on multiple occasions with the box stuck over his head for several months before rescuers were able to grab the box off his head in February, City of Mobile Animal Services officials said. Bear fled the scene after the box was removed but was later trapped and taken to the city shelter. The canine now has a permanent home with Martin Miller, an animal advocate who works closely with the Mobile Animal Services Director, Robert Bryant. Miller and Bryant said Bear will now serve as an animal services ambassador, spending his days greeting the public at the city shelter before going home with Miller at night. Trying to find a good home for a dog that's garnered this much possibility is always a big deal, Bryant told WKRG-TV. There's going to be a ton of people that want to take him home, and in one particular case, we got to thinking about it, and really, who better than one of the team members that spent so much time trying to get him off the streets in the first place? That is super special. And in the video, it's about four minutes long, um, they're talking with him, and um, they show the box, and Bear immediately wants to get rid of the box. So, um, it's rather touching. Gray seal spits water stream at Eagle in first recorded interaction. A bird watcher on England's Isle of Wight captured a photo of a gray seal spitting a stream of water at a white-tailed eagle, marking the first time the two species have been seen interacting. University of Portsmouth researchers authored a study detailing the interaction witnessed by birdwatcher Claire Jacobs in Newtown Harbor. Jacobs witnessed a white-tailed eagle swooping down to the surface of the water during high tide and being met by an adult gray seal that emerged directly beneath the raptor. Jacobs said the seal barked a warning at the eagle before letting loose the stream of water aimed toward the swooping bird. 
I'm always thrilled to catch photos of the eagles, but catching such a rare and never seen before interaction made my year. Megan Jacobs, the bird watcher's daughter and paleontologist at the University of Portsmouth School of Environment, Geography, and Geosciences, co-authored the study based on her mother's encounter and the photos she snapped of the in interaction. Sightings of gray seals and white-tailed eagles are frequent events now on the Isle of Wight, but interactions between these two species have so far not been reported, she said. She said the photographs mark multiple firsts for researchers. This is the first record of an interaction between these two top predators and the first report of gray seals using spitting as a means of defense or deterrence against an aerial foe, she said. The spitting may be a strategy to exclude white-tailed eagles from competing for prey as they are in direct competition for fish, fish resources. Escape pig named Kevin Bacon befriends Wisconsin family. A Wisconsin family found an escape pig wandering on their driveway and ended up making a 450-pound friend. Jake Mulgard said at his home, was at his home with his family in Brighton when his wife checked the driveway camera and saw a pig wandering on their property. The family spoke with neighbors in the Kenosha County Sheriff's Department, eventually discovering the 450-pound pig named Kevin Bacon had escaped from his home about a mile away. Kevin had squeezed out of his barn while his owner was away and made his way to Mulgard's house. Mulgard and his family decided to walk Kevin home using treats, including Oreos, to keep him moving in the right direction. He ate an entire refrigerator worth of food and a whole bag of marshmallows, Mulgard told WITI-TV. Mulgard said his kids made friends with a curious and friendly animal along the way. The owner said if he stops on you, you can jump on his back and he likes to run at that point. Mulgard told WTMJ-TV. And so my one daughter was daring enough to jump on his back. The family came back to visit Kevin the next day and fed him donuts. They wanted to adopt him immediately, Mulgard said of his kids, and I said, We don't have a place to put a 450-pound pig. But yeah, they fell in love with him right away. Traffic blocking beaver taken into protective custody in Washington. Police in Washington said a beaver seen blocking traffic on two occasions was taken into protective custody but the second buck tooth suspect remains on the loose. The Bellingham Police Department said officers responded to Aldrich Road north of Bellingham on a report of two beavers blocking traffic. One of the animals fled the scene while its larger cohort remained behind in the road. The second beaver also fled while officers were awaiting assistance from the Whatcom Humane Society in Washington Fish and Wildlife Personnel. The larger beaver appeared the next day near Meridian and Telegraph Road and proceeded to be a traffic hazard, police said, on social media. The beaver was taken into protective custody and transported to a fish and wildlife facility for examination. Hopefully it will get the help it needs and give up living dangerously on the streets of Bellingham, police wrote. Well, and I gotta tell you, Pennsylvania has got some strange things that they do, and here's another one. Balls Out Bowling Event invites bowlers to roll in the nude. A Pennsylvania naturalism group announced bowlers will be able to roll in the nude at its upcoming Bowl, balls Out Bowling event. The Pittsburgh area naturalist group announced it has rented out Crafton Ingram Lanes in Pittsburgh for its Bowling in the Buff event April the 28th. Nudity is required, with the exception that women can wear bottoms. The group said on an event page, Please bring a towel and a bag for your belongings. Anyone who wants to shed their clothes for the night of Balls Out Bowling needs to purchase a $25 ticket in advance. Balls Out Bowling is the ultimate bowling experience for anyone who loves to have fun and show off their skills in the buff, the group said. The event 
is open to bowling fans of all skill levels who are over the age of 18. The group stressed that safety and privacy will, paramount, will be paramount during the event, with no photography or video recording allowed. Sexual activity is not permitted. Nudism does not equal consent and harassment will not be taken lightly. Violators will be asked to leave the event, Page states. And there you have it for what in our nation. Yeah, a little crazy, isn't it? Okay. All right, let's get into Promises from God's Heart. Promises from God's Heart regarding forgiveness. Sometimes this is a little hard. We have redemption, the forgiveness of sins in him. Colossians 1, 14. If you, God, kept records on wrong, wrongdoings, who would stand a chance? As it turns out, forgiveness is your habit, and that's why you're worshipped. I pray to God my life of prayer and wait for what he'll say and do. My life's on the line before God, my Lord, waiting and watching till morning. Psalm 130, 3 through 6. And that comes from the message. Jesus took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for so many, that their sins may be forgiven. Matthew 26, 27 through 28. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Luke 6, 37. Blessed and happy and favored are those whose lawless acts have been forgiven and whose sins have been covered up and completely buried. Romans 4, 7. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Matthew 12, 32. If you forgive anyone, I, Paul, do too. For what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, is for you in the presence of Christ. I have done this so that we may not be taken advantage of by Satan, for we are not eager and ignorant of his schemes. 2 Corinthians 2, 10-11 We have redemption in him through his blood, the forgiveness of his trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Ephesians 1, 7 through 8. Now, I don't know about you, but I have some catching up to do on some YouTube channels. I haven't watched um, Heather from the Crochet Witch in a while, and I need to catch up on her videos, as well as, I think, Spring. I think I have on her list her list her on my list to watch too to catch up on so yeah that's kind of it um tomorrow we will be doing the torch tunisian crochet stitch for that um you will most likely like to have either i don't know an i or a j hook um and some cotton yarn unless you want to do it as just a regular square to maybe put into a uh an afghan later. Um, you could use acrylic or something else, but I'm going to use cotton because I'm going to make a dish cloth with it. Um, yeah, that is it for today. I, Like I said, I am working on getting the shawl up sometime this week, as well as a couple of other videos, and I hope to see you soon. But in the meantime, remember, be a little kinder to yourself, be kinder to one another, love one another, and get in touch with God today. See you again soon. Bye.